I need to know everything Who and the what and the where I need everything Trust me, I hear what you're saying But act like it's new what you're telling me I gotta read all my trade publications And sip my tea till it is all done I think it's all fun Uh, my name's Current Vision. Uh, I own a small business in Toronto, actually just outside of the GTA, called Vision Vision. Uh, we specialize in high-end custom eyewear, anything from luxury vintage to luxury custom Cartier. We're kind of the go-to guys for you. I've been uh, kind of actually bouncing around career-wise up until I found this, but the main thing was always getting into something creative, something sales-oriented, and I just fell in love with eyewear, so I figured that you know, adding my own custom look to it, my own designer flair to it would sort of breathe new life into an otherwise slow industry. So yeah, I've been kind of trying to put the eyewear industry on its head a little bit in the city. I would say unofficially I started the business in like 2015, 2016. Um, and that was just because it was the first time I ever made an attempt at, you know, buying product or even like trying to understand how to sell the product in a more serious manner. Um, and then things got really like busy and really kind of took off for us, I'd say in like 2018, 2019. Um, <laughs> no, actually, um, the very first like business venture I actually had was actually, I, sh I wouldn't even really call it a venture, but I used to buy and flip sneakers, cell phones, limited edition clothing when I was like in grade eight, grade nine, grade 10. So that was kind of like my first feel at like entrepreneurship and then First time I ever really incorporated a company. My cousins and I, we built a company called Dapper Boulevard. It was just an online e-commerce for like men's accessories, bracelets, ties, um, and that failed so quickly. So, you know, I'd like to think I learned a couple things from it. Well, one, it's my last name. So like, it's very natural and it kind of is like very fitting for what the brand is. You know, I want people to feel personal about it. Um, and it kind of just rolls off the tongue. The vision, vision, it's, it sounds like you're saying vision twice. So it almost just kind of worked out perfectly. But shout out to my barber, Prem. He was actually one of the guys who like influenced me to like go that route in naming the company early on. I wish I had a little bit more of a routine. Um, but you know, with the pandemic, it's kind of thrown all of us for a whirl. But I would say I wake up every morning anywhere from like 7.30 to 8 o'clock. Um, and what I mainly do is I'll go through all of my messages and inquiries that I may have gotten from earlier on in the night, overnight, maybe from overseas clients. So I spend a couple hours in the morning going over that, kind of figuring out what deliveries are coming in. Um, and then I'll probably head out of the house by about 11, 11.30 to get to the store for 12. And then I try to make this my home base for the day. Um, so for any of my customers that are coming in, try to get repairs done out of the way first, and then really just dedicate a big portion of my time also just kind of creating content for the product and you know marketing the product and getting people to come in the store and stuff like that. Minimum like 80 hours a week, 90 hours a week. Um, maybe it's more, I don't really keep track of it, but yeah, man, I'd 80 hours plus without a doubt. I mean, I'd say early on the adversities that we kind of faced was one is how do you find customers for such a niche product, right? Um, it's very difficult to do in an industry as well where people are so kind of consumed by normality and by prices. It's hard to introduce something that sort of challenges that mindset. Um, so I would say early on, it was really just how do you acquire customers? How do you make people understand a product that they didn't otherwise understand or wouldn't otherwise have it explained to them? Um, that and it's, a, it's an expensive industry to get into. So it's, it, it's about having, you know, the funds in order, you know, putting that together and yeah, that's, I'd say those are the hardest. It's definitely not your average eyewear. So the best way I could put it is it's, it's luxury designer eyewear with a custom twist to it. Um, we mainly specialize in frames that have been sourced from all over the world, very different time periods. So we have a vintage collection that will stem from anywhere from the 1970s to the 1990s. Very cool brands like Versace, Old Chanel and stuff. And we get to put our own fresh flavor on it. But then we also deal with another side of it where it's custom Cartier. And Cartier is a type of company where you can then add even more sort of creative flavor to what you're doing, what you're designing. Um, kind of like what I'm wearing right now. You can put cuts in your lenses and do a bunch of cool stuff. So I would say that kind of encompasses the, the product line that we deal with. Mainly artisanal and niche eyewear, luxury eyewear. Yeah. I would say that the 
target group that I'm aiming for is a very fashion forward kind of group or a fashion forward type of person. Um, a person who isn't really afraid to be a little bit more bold with, you know, maybe their daily style choices. Um, glasses oftentimes are referred to as jewelry for your face and in a sense, you can tuck a chain away, you can hide a watch, but when you're wearing your glasses, it's on your face and it's for everybody to see. So the styles that we have are much louder, they're much more out there, they're a little bit more bold. So for the people who I am targeting, I want them to be comfortable. I want them to be able to use these glasses to sort of, sort of show an extension of their personality. I'm really thankful to say that there's a, a cool list of guys that I got to work with. Um, the very first one was Fred Van Vliet. Um, so he reached out to me via Instagram. We chatted back and forth. And then that kind of just snowballed. It certified me and I was able to approach new guys. So now I work with guys like Serge Ibaka, worked with Schoolboy Q, uh, Nav. Uh, the coolest is obviously getting to work with Drake, shout out to OVO. <laughs> uh, but getting to work with Drake was actually really cool. Um, when, it works, when you work with these kind of guys though, you don't always get to see them directly. So it's always kind of a process that goes between a few people. But yeah, I worked with Drake. We did some really cool stuff. We made him custom heart lenses to celebrate a certified lover boy kind of album drop. Um, Man, who else? I, I, I've definitely dealt with some cool guys. A lot of local artists from the city as well. Um, you know, they, they, they've shown a lot of love. Um, and yeah, just a few other athletes. Nothing too, too crazy. But, you know, we're trying to grow the list. We're trying to grow the list. Yeah. I wish I actually asked some of them these questions. Um, but I think the big part for a lot of them um, is just offering the convenience of being able to go and see them where they are or bring the product to where they are. Um, you know, celebrities like, for example, like Fred Van Vliet or a Serge Ibaka or a guy like Nav, who we've dealt with and who are awesome clients of ours, um, they don't have that luxury to be able to leave what they're doing every day to come and shop. So we bring that experience to them, but also bring that knowledge and that peace of mind that they are buying from somebody who knows what they're doing and will also be there to service them beyond just that initial purchase. And I think that's what kind of like gets them to keep coming back basically. Uh, so it definitely always ranges, but I think like currently in our inventory, the most expensive piece, it's going to be one of the similar to the one I'm wearing right now. It's a very limited edition two-tone tulip wood. Um, so it essentially presses different colors together and probably at like four grand, 4,500 for something like that. Yep. I have one coming back. That's really cool. We put diamonds in some of our glasses. So that one's going to be about 10, 15,000 when it comes back. Most people actually think that like I would gravitate towards like Cartier right away, but I would have to say like my favorite to wear every day is vintage Hilton. Um, mainly just because the designs are so like out there, they're very eccentric, very detailed. Um, and it's just not something that you see everybody wearing. So it kind of like causes it to be a conversation piece for sure. I would say it depends kind of what brands you're getting into, right? So the collections, the vintage collections that we curate because the trends from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s were all about loud gold and metal, a lot of them are made out of like your average aluminums and stuff, but are finished with precious metal plating. So you'll get 18 karat gold. Sometimes you'll get platinum plated material. Um, but then you can move into stuff as luxurious as Cartier and you have things that are finished with bobinga wood or black buffalo horn or tulip wood. And you just get these like really cool textures and finishes basically. Hell yeah! <laughs> no, I definitely do, man. And, and that's not like any sort of like arrogance or anything. Like we should all be confident in what we do. Um, I think a big reason why, why I would put myself up there as one of the best or one of the better ones because, you know, there's a lot of OGs in every industry, you know what I mean? So I never want to say that I'm better than any of them, but I learn from them and that's why I've gotten to the top of my game. I pick and choose mentors who know what they're doing. So. My father, who's been an optician for 50 plus years, knows the game like the back of his hand. So imagine kind of having that cheat code in your back pocket. You know, you're years ahead of guys who are just getting into it. Or when you look at a guy, for example, like um, uh, Chris Smokes, for example, in Detroit, who really like encompasses the Cartier culture and has made it what it was for Detroit and you know the states and everything. So there's always OGs that you learn from. So I think because I've chosen the right people to learn from, it brings me to that better place a lot faster and, and you know with a little bit more like genuine feel, I guess. 
Um, so we have our e-commerce website, so that's www.vijanvision.com, uh, V-I-J-A-N-vision.com. Uh, we're really, really active on Instagram. I would say that's where it's the best place to find all your info. So that's uh, at Vijan Vision, same thing, V-I-J-A-N-V-I-S-I-O-N. And just reach out to us anytime, man. Email us, you DM us. Like I, I always love talking to new customers, love speaking with new people, um, and just kind of sharing like that passion that I have for eyewear. Uh, this is Vijan from Vijan Vision, and you're tuned in watching The Comfort Zone. Good. We're good, bro. Perfect, perfect, man. Perfect, perfect, awesome. Bro. Thank you, guys. That was cool.